The hour is coming and now is when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth, for such the fathers seek to worship him. Our gospel reading this morning is from the first chapter of Mark. I love Mark. Mark is a man after my own heart. He doesn't use a lot of fancy words or a lot of descriptive words, and he tells it like it is. Mark provides only the information that is necessary. Mark is short, sweet, and to the point. Kind of reminds me of that 1960s police drama, Dragnet, where um, Joe Friday says, just the facts, ma'am, just the facts. The first chapter of Mark is partly about marking time. Our reading today is just seven short, very interesting verses. And these verses say so much in such a short period of time. The words now, after, past, were, immediately. These are only a few of the descriptive descriptions of time and um, implications of reactions. When talking about time, we have to remember the New Testament was written for the time period when Jesus walked the earth 2,000 years ago. The word time does not mean the same now as it did back then. Time was considered an era or an age. Um, pretty much like when the age of King Herod or the era of King Herod. Now is the first word in today's lesson. And now points to a specific point in time. Now, after John the Baptist has been arrested. Well, you know, John had been preaching about the one who will baptize with holy water and Holy Spirit. With John's arrest, the, his time of influence has been diminished. And a new era is, is coming. The era of prophesying the Son of God is coming. Well, that's, that's over. The new era is Jesus, the Son of God, arriving to let people know the good news of God's love has arrived. And it arrived in the form of an unassuming, mysterious, enigmatic person named Jesus. Jesus announces his arrival with the words, Time has been fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Time has been fulfilled it actually marks that, that that end of the era has come. And when you think about the words, the kingdom of God, Jesus is talking about himself. Jesus, the Son of God, is God's kingdom, God's good news, and God's love. Jesus has come to select his disciples to help spread the good news. And while he is gathering his disciples, he is telling all who will listen to repent and believe in the good news. I find it interesting that um, this one commandment, which... Um, just doesn't have a marker of time. And, um, you know, it's, I think it might be because God doesn't have time. God is, is not interested in time. He has no future, no present, no past. God is now. God is always now. And this is consistent throughout the, the lesson that God is always now. Therefore, the command to repent is not really a command. It's an invitation. This invitation to denounce sin and accept the good news, to accept God's love, is now and has always been an open and never-ending invitation. Jesus travels along the coast of the Sea of Galilee and comes across Simon and his brother Andrew. And they were casting their nets into the sea. Now Mark, 
who is the apostle of few details, actually tells us that these two men are fishermen by trade. And Jesus approaches Simon and Andrew and invites them to follow me, and I will make you fisher of people. This command or invitation has an urgent and immediate need to it and feel to it. And Jesus wanted and needed an immediate answer. Now, I grew up in a Southern Baptist religion. And let me tell you, when God calls, you answer. I imagine that was the way it felt like when um, Simon and Andrew were asked to follow Jesus. They felt that immediate, timely need to go with Jesus. And they go, leaving their possessions behind. Jesus, along with Simon and Andrew, walk further down the road. And they come across James and his brother John. Now, James and John's were in boats, and, and they were mending their nets along with their father Zebedee and their hired hands. Jesus gives James and John the invitation, saying, follow me, I'll make you fisher of men. The need to answer Jesus' call, again, was strong with John and James as it was with Simon and Andrew. Now, coincidentally, in Jesus' need to get the good news out, he found ways to use the skills that these apostles already, or these disciples already had in order to make them fisher of men. For these four men to stop what they were doing and leave behind their possessions, their families and their trades, and follow a perfect stranger, that is unusual. Yet these four individually chose to leave all behind. This change is an end to an era in these men's lives. And now they are starting a new life, a new era. Some scholars claim their immediacy to answer is proof that the four men were called by God. 2,000 years ago, Jesus calls his first four disciples from very humble lives. Mark does not tell us why these four men were chosen. He does not tell us why they dropped everything to follow Jesus. Just that they do. God sent the Holy Spirit to Simon, Andrew, James, and John and placed in them that sense of urgency, the immediate need to answer yes. God is still calling humble people like Simon, Andrew, James, and John to proclaim his good news. God calls humble people like us to tell his story. And God is not only calling people like us, he is calling us to proclaim his love. So what is our cost to answer his call? A few minutes to tell a story to a child? A few hours to help maintain church property? A lifetime of setting examples by leading clean and righteous lives, and for some, laying down their life for others. We are all called to serve our Lord, and we are called to do different tasks according to our abilities. God's time is now. Are you ready to answer that call? I would say that now is a good time to answer that call and to tell Jesus' story. God is calling all Christians to be a part of this new era, this time of renewal. With God's help, we can be the disciples who carry forward the story of God's love. With God's help, we can be the ones to encourage future generations to love like Jesus loved. With God's help, we can be the ones to help make life better for all of God's children. God's time is now. Thanks be to God.